welcome along to the Italian Farm Sporting Life preview for the final day of the Cheltenham Festival, which means the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. And look who's been deported from Presby Park to join us in a hoodie as well. Ben Linfoot, welcome back, Ben. Did you have a good two days down there? It was fantastic. Cheers, Dave. Yeah, I mean, Tuesday was amazing with Constitution Hill and Honeysuckle, the atmosphere was electric. The raw when uh, Honeysuckle hit the front was something special that will uh, live long in the memory. And uh, Wednesday was good as well, a bit colder, a bit wet. Um, I struggled to get too excited about a, another champion chase falling into an Ergamine's lap, but he was obviously very good again. And uh, yeah, it was an enjoyable two days. Matt, you're already planning your celebratory drinks at the end of the festival. We're going to toast it on the back of the Gold Cup, a really good Boodle's Cheltenham Gold Cup. Let's get the time for ratings up on screen to take a look at. And this is a race where we've got two horses who could potentially blow it apart. It's a brilliant Gold Cup, I think, Dave. It really is. Um, Gallop and Deschamps, we've got to start with him. He is time form top rated and he still carries the time form P, the fabled time form P. He's only seven. Graham Cunningham was in here just the other week comparing him. Um, just the excitement around him as a stayer, as a potential stayer, a similar to Corto Star, just that aura that he has about him. Obviously, uh, came to came to grief at the last fence last year with the race at his mercy, and he's not looked back since. He's uh, he's he's the real deal, I think. Yeah, it's very very hard to crab this horse, and I've been trying to do it kind of all through the winter, thinking, well, if we got soft ground, his stamina would be tested, and it will, it will. But I was really impressed with him in the Irish Gold Cup. I've been with Statler for a little while. Um, I'm not totally dissuaded by him. I think he'll run well for a place, but this is, uh, this is a proper horse we're talking about. And obviously, Aplutad, the other one that you're referring to there at the top of the top of the ratings, last year's winner, massive question mark over him. Not seen him since the one blowout in the Betfair chase, but seriously talented himself as well. Some video clues to come up. We've also got a pace map for the Gold Cup, Ben. And the one thing that people have been saying in the build-up to this, there isn't like a guaranteed end-to-end -end gallop on again. No, there isn't. There's not not too many who look likely to to go forward, is there? And um, that would play into the hands of of Galloping de Chance, you would think, and and the speed horses like uh, A Plutard as well. Uh, so we will see. But to be honest, it's a pretty big field, and I think something might surprise us and and make sure it's a nice even gallop anyway. I won't get too drawn into to thinking how this race will be run because I, I think it'd be like a normal Gold Cup. Um, and in, and in that case, on soft ground. It will bring the stamina horses into play. To be honest, I can't see any holes in Galloping Deschamps. It's amazing, really. This horse has been running over fences 15 months. That's all that he's been uh, doing. And he, and he hasn't really put a foot wrong, apart from at the festival last year. Here he is at just a moment, last wasn't time. He going to the last tee, just for like two strides, I wondered, is he in trouble? Yeah, but it's it's very brief, isn't it? Yeah. Fury Road is, is is a pretty good horse. Oh, now he's only rated uh, you know around 160, and you'd expect Galloping de Chance to brush him aside, and he did eventually. You know, he jumped across him there. It was pretty awkward for for Galloping de Chance, but once Paul Town then straightened him up, he really did run away from the Jiggins Town horse. It's a bit of a deceiving camera angle. He's already pulling five lengths clear of him there, yeah. and at the line he's eight lengths clear. So. Um, Look at how he finishes as well. He's so strong through the line and it took him an age to pull him up. Fury Road was stopping though to, to basically nothing there, wasn't he? He was totally emptying on the on the run in and, and Paul could see him already lugging towards his left, which is why I think he probably just had to just shake him up to get by him. Yeah, but I wouldn't look at that performance and think Gallop into Yeah, he's gonna struggle over another two furlongs. I think he's got everything this horse. We've got a British defence and it's led by Brave Man's game, Ben. Here he is winning the King George at Kempton. And he did this despite things not necessarily going ideally for Harry Cobden. Yeah, Harry Cobden rode him with a lot of confidence this way out wide, didn't he? And uh, he utilised his excellent jumping and speed to, to win the race. And he was brilliant this day. I, I just wonder if he is a Kempton horse. Um, perhaps going back for the King George will be what he, he does. And he could be that type of horse that ends up at Kempton at Christmas every year. Will he thrive in a Gold Cup is the big question. I'm not so sure. We've got no evidence, have we? Because um, he was ruled out of the brand advisory at the 11th hour last year. And so we just don't know. Well, I mean, the one thing, Daryl Dacre was making this argument on the Doncaster preview that isn't, is a flat track horse. But that Ballymore run, when he was third to Bob Ollinger, Matt, at the time, that was a career best. It wasn't like he, he completely bombed out in that Ballymore. He didn't, he didn't bomb out, no. I think and the argument would be that he's really developed and improved. And obviously, that jumping technique is going to stand him in very good stead. He, he is, I'd say, without question, the best jumper, natural jumper in the field. The way that he springs from one side of the fence to another, very much like masterminded of that sort of mould, but... Um, this is going to be a gruelling test. Don't forget there was only one Irish horse in that King George envoy, and didn't 
seemed to perform, certainly didn't run up to his, his ratings on the day. Um, Brave Man's game could run another blind. It could run the best race of his life and finish fourth or fifth in this field. This is really, really deep. And unless something happens on Thursday, obviously we're recording this before day three, it's going to be perhaps 50-odd runners since Paul Nichols had a festival winner. You know, you've got to factor that into your, the equation. They, they just haven't been running well here, have they? It's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Craig David's playing most race courses in the UK this bit. Let's rewind to last year's Gold Cup scoop. Aplutard, this is the set of the horse, along with Galloping to Chance, who, Galloping to Champ, who could blow this apart. If this Aplutard turns up, then we've got one heck of a duel on. Yeah, I thought he was in trouble. Um, red silks, blue cap, Rachel Blackmore, short of room, but look at the acceleration he shows to win the race. This is tremendous. And you don't often see this in a staying chaser where they pull away by 12 lengths after the last at Cheltenham. It's pretty much unheard of, and that's why on this farm, he's a huge player in the race. Now, there's a couple of factors against him, isn't there? Because we haven't seen um, much of Aplutard at all since this race, just, one, just once in the Betfair chase uh, back in November where he was pulled up. And so there's a question mark on well-being. And perhaps even more significantly for me, I think there's a ground question mark. That was on good to soft ground. All of his best forms on good to soft ground. His, his Betfair chase win was on good to soft ground. Soft ground just blunts his acceleration for me. And so that, that's a big question mark. Matt, let's have a look at the Cotswold chase with you. Now, Ahoy Senor comes out on top in this at Cheltenham. It, it probably was a strong renewal. Now, there's all sorts of cases that can be made for horses in behind. Nobody hates in particular shortening up in the market off the back of it. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it's normally quite a poor race, isn't it? And I think you are right. This was probably above average. Again, we're kind of bringing the best of the Brits here, plus Noble Yates. And... and Ultimately, I came away thinking maybe Noble Rates has run probably the best trial of the lot. Despite Ahoy Senor really putting it together on the day, he's still sticky at his jumps, his knee, and he's still a bit of a big baby. I'd be surprised if Ahoy Senor was able to back up and, and beat the stronger field here. Noble Yates has been trained uh, to a T for the Gold Cup. Um, Emmett Mullins obviously did it last year with the Grand National. He's going to have definitely have his ground, I think. Soft ground is going to really play to his strengths. We might not be looking at a true end-to-end -end gallop where they're really out on the feet, um, but I can see him running very, very well, Noble Yates. He, he's, he's, he's still improving, I think, even on the back of that defeat. Um, they see the headgear well. back on, don't they? And they go yeah, that's a potential angle for improvement. The cheek pieces are back on. He obviously wore them for the first time uh, when winning at Aintree. Um, you'd have to respect him. I think, I think the Brits are really up against it again. We've got a final video, and unfortunately for Phil Tuffle and the Presbyterian Cup team, it isn't a British horse in action. It's conflated for Gordon Elliott, Ben. This is him winning the Savills Chase over Christmas. Now, the thing with him, he ran in the Ryanair last year, which Gordon says was a mistake. He thinks he would have been second in last year's Gold Cup because they had horses in and around that mix, so he thinks they, he would have finished behind it. Does he need to come forward again? He does. He does. I don't think... Um... He's, he's a, million, a million miles off the best of days, but I think he's a, he's a grade below. Um, he's won a couple of pretty weak three-mile grade ones in Ireland for me. And um, I think he needs races to be run in a certain way to, to be shown to his best. I'm not sure if he's going to get that in a, in a Gold Cup, to be honest. And I'm, I'm not absolutely sure that he'll stay three-mile two either. I think his absolute optimum conditions are three-mile, small field, weaker grade one and uh, it wouldn't be on my shortlist. What's amazing with this Gold Cup is that you've got the winners of just about every trial throughout the season. It so rarely happens. We've all been sort of checking the news the last couple of weeks, just thinking which one's going to be ruled out, yeah, which one's maybe going to step on a stone. You've got last year's winner, Grand National winner from last year, the National Hunt Chase winner from last year, Statler, Betfair Chase winner, both Savile Chase winner, the Cotswold winner. You know, they are all there. There are no excuses. And hopefully this could really bring out a star performance in Gallop and Deschamps. Selection time, Ben. Well, I think Gallop and Deschamps wins. Um, I think he's got everything you need in a Gold Cup horse and I, I think he will win but I am having a bet um, without him. I don't know whether to go in the without market or just a small bet each way but I'm back in Royal Pagai because he has run fifth and sixth in Gold Cups before and we've seen over the years, not so much in recent years but if you go back a bit, you often get a big priced placed horse in a Gold Cup. I think it could be him this year because he's finally got his ground in a Gold Cup and um, when he's been fifth and sixth it's been good to soft. He's a, we know he's a proper soft heavy ground horse. He goes really well after, after a small break and he's had two months off the track. Um, so I think he's got quite a lot of in his favourite, you know, 50 to 1, that sort of price. And I'll be looking at him in the without galloping to Champs markets too. What? 
I tipped Statler at 16 to 1 before the Irish Gold Cup, came away thinking, yeah, maybe a squeak on, on softish ground. It might just help him bridge that eight length gap, but he, he's just a, a rung below in terms of pure class, I think. Um, he could run well again. Um, he could run well again. He could be the one to chase Galloping de Champagne, but he's very hard to oppose. I thought Manella Vindo might be potentially overpricing the without Galloping de Champagne market. Got his ground. Got his ground, running four festivals, two wins, two seconds in Grade One company. Can't beat Statler on that run the new year, but he comes alive at Cheltenham, and I think he could easily finish in the first four. Fascinating Boodle Cheltenham Golf Cup. Fascinating JCB Triumph Hurdle. We've got the ratings. I mean, you spot the Brit. I think you'll even spot one on these time for ratings. Willie Mullins dominate and just look at that 167p down to 162 big p lotty mouth gallimasso and blood destiny we'll have a look at the pace map too because how this race is going to be run is a big part because we've got blood destiny who matt we've only seen twice but from what we know about him he's going to go forward as this pace map will say he'll go forward he'll blitz it and it's a question is he going to stay there he's a big bludgeoning beast isn't he yeah he's um He's hugely promising. Um, there's an awful lot to like about the way he's gone about his business. I know that he's been crabbed a little bit for his ju jumping technique. You're bound to get that with such a young horse in um, in juvenile hurdles, jumping out of sort of deep, really deep winter ground. He's looked the business. Um, there's plenty more to come. The race he beat Sir Allen in, obviously that threw up the the Boodles winner, didn't it, earlier in the week? So and he was, was miles behind him, wasn't he? He was so far behind. <laughs> there's substance to that form. Uh, it's just whether he can give the weight away to his stable mates. I, I think, you know, he's really struggling to look beyond Willie Mullins in this. This is a proper horse. He, he's probably going to go chasing, isn't he? He's a real big son of no risk at all. Um, we'll love the conditions. Patrick's got a really, really good ride here. We're going to see the Blood Destiny video in a minute, but first, Ben, you were at the Dublin Racing Festival. This is the, the finish we're trying to decipher. This is Gallimasso lost him out round two. This is Gallimasso winning. Would she have won had Lossie Mouth not run into traffic problems? No, no, this was a this was a, a really good ride from Danny Mullins on, on Gallimasso, who got the perfect trip out in front, and Lossie Mouth simply didn't get the perfect trip. She was badly hampered by her owner mate, wasn't she, um, earlier in this in this video, and had to work really hard to get in contention. And you can see Paul Townend still trying to reel in the stable mate there, and she, uh, she doesn't quite manage to do it. And he had a big choice, Paul Townend, in this race whether it was going to be Lossy Mouth, Gallimasso or uh, Blood Destiny. And he's plumped for Lossy Mouth. He's gone for the Grey Mare. He's trying to uh, get redemption after what happened uh, at the DRF. And I think, uh, I think he's on the right one. Matt, we've got the Blood Destiny video as well. I mean, you've talked about this, the, the format. So this is him winning. He's miles clear when we join him. <laughs> Patrick makes a point, Patrick Mullins, of the horses in behind... There's plenty trying to get handicapped as well, so it's quite hard to know where you are with the form. Yeah, you've got to be careful with that, I suppose, haven't you? In, in the, you're right, I think they probably word had got out that they're up against a bit of a beast from the, the Mullins yard, and, um, yeah, they're, they're just sort of played it cautiously, I suspect. They, they know fine well this is a good horse. He, he sort of kicked the, uh, the final two hurdles out of the way. He's probably going to be a horse that improves for a fence. Um, it is... It is an interesting battle, isn't it, between these two? Because I don't think there's going to be a huge amount between them in the market. I'm actually with Lossy Mouth. I know this horse is Triumph Field. You've really got to stay, and I think this horse will be a good stayer. But Lossy Mouth has that... He ha she has that real burst, doesn't she? She's, she's actually from the family of... Uh, well, same family as Lord Glitters. She's got that little bit of class pedigree uh, in her as well, and it's just a weight concession. You know, you get a, you get a filly, a, a young filly like that, with real quality form... Um, the seven pound just could, for me, that's that's the decider. I'm not probably not going to have a bet, to be honest. One for Lossy Mouth, two for Lossy Mouth, three for Lossy Mouth. There you are. You can, yeah, that's all you need. I thought when I saw a win over Christmas, you'd win the Triumph Hurdle, and I'm not going to desert her now. You two guys, both in great tipping form, 25 to 1 grand annual winner for Matt. Ben found the brand advisor winner, the, the real whacker. Ben, give us another bet for Friday. Oh, another bet for Friday. I'm going to stick with Willie Mullins, actually, and go with St. Sam in the county hurdle at a big price. It is a big price. Yeah, 33 to 1. Um, he is another horse who lost his confidence chasing. He, he unseated in the Sporting Life Arkle last year and uh, has come back over hurdles this season. Won over hurdles first time out at Punchest Town in, in soft ground over two mile three, but it's just been too keen over hurdles, including last time over, over two mile two. At Leopardstown, and I just think dropping back to two in a strongly run county hurdle on absolutely ideal ground, we're going to see this horse settle and we're going to see him come home because of that. Um, so, uh, a big price, I'm on him each way.
Well, I thought he might win the stairs hurdle at one point this winter, yeah, no, so uh, that, that, that could hurt me. Um, I have got one at a big price in the county hurdle as well. Obviously, check out Value Bet for that. I do fancy Might I. The Brits are going to have the last laugh for us, Dave. Come on, Toffers. In the Martin Pipe, the final race, Might I is still very well handicapped on that form last year with Constitution Hill, John Bon, um, Three Card Bragg. That, those kind of horses he was placed in the, in the Grade 1 at Aintree. He's had the two runs this season, didn't stay three miles when he got a bit stewed up and... Uh, uh, raced far too freely and then I thought he was pretty unlucky in the run last time out on, on trials there when second he was beaten a neck by Hacker de Plas. I think that's a really progressive young horse as well he came from much further back it was a massive upgrade in terms of that form he's only gone up another couple of pounds he's on 145 that means he sneaks in at the top of the weights in the Martin Pipe Harry Fry um, fits a ton tie for the first time I think this is a really well handicapped horse couple of sporting selections there from a couple of sporting gentlemen. Thanks to Ben. Thanks to Max. A fantastic Boodle Cheltenham Gold Cup. Enjoy the final day of the festival.